let's say we want to build our soil. What's the first thing a lot of people are going to turn to? Compost, fertilizers, either conventional or organic, mulches. Well, what if we could build soil without any of those? Oh, you're going to say cover crops. I know you were going to say cover crops. Well, we're going to build soil and we're not going to plant any cover crops either. Can we do that? Is there a way to build soil without planting, without adding? There is, and it's actually a way that doesn't involve us at all. We just have to sit back and let the process happen and manage ourselves, not it. So we stay out of its way and it can do its thing instead of us trying to implore our thing upon it. Let's find out what it is coming up in this video. Recently, I did an interview with Dr. Elaine Ingham. That's an interview you'll be able to see coming up on this YouTube channel in a few weeks. And one of the big takeaways that I took away from Dr. Ingham was the importance of having plants growing in the soil as much and as long as possible. A lot of times when we think of building soil, we think of building soil from the top down. We think of adding stuff on top of the soil surface, but really a lot of soil is built from the bottom up. It's carbon that is introduced under the soil to bacteria and other organisms in the soil that actually builds the soil. So it's not us putting the carbon in, it's the plants that we put into the ground that are pumping carbon into the ground for those microorganisms to thrive, survive, and build the soil that we want as gardeners. Given that we want that to be happening, there's a few ways that we can go about this. We can plant vegetables like this tomato right here. They're not only producing fruit for us, they're producing fruits for the organisms underneath the ground in the form of sugar. So all of our vegetables are pumping sugars into the ground, building the soil as we grow the vegetables that we want. But why aren't these plants good enough? Why isn't a tomato good enough? It's an annual. It's eventually going to come out. It's not going to stay in the soil for a long time. Ideally, we would want a perennial in the soil, something that we don't have to pull out very often, if ever, and something that can keep putting sugars down into the soil year round. One of the ways that I've tried to do this is with cover crops. But again, cover crops have the same problems as this tomato. They have a terminal life. You are planting them and eventually ending their life. At some point, they are not a perennial. And in that gap between this plant or this cover crop and the next cover crop, there's going to be some bare soil. There's going to be soil that isn't getting sugars put into it. So you either have to have a nice tight rotation where your two crops overlap one another. One gets started just as the new one's coming out, or you have to go with something that truly is a perennial. Given this perennial problem and cover crops not being able to satisfy that, one thing I've tried to do is plant some perennial cover crops, ones that would go in the ground and would never come out. For example, around these tomatoes, my goal was to have clover growing around the base of them. But as you can see, look at all the clover that has grown. I don't know if I got bad seed. I don't know if it was a management thing, but very little of that clover that I planted into these beds has succeeded in germinating. So. It's not happening. If we think about what I was trying to do, the idea is good. A perennial crop in the ground, pumping sugars and other nutrients into the ground for organisms under the soil surface to thrive upon. The theory is great. The theory is sound. The problem with it is there's humans involved. There's management involved. You got to buy stuff. You have to do stuff. So I started thinking and I started thinking about what Elaine was saying. And what if we could get the same effect of the clover happening without doing any work? What if we could just let nature come in? What plants would nature put here that we could just leave in place that wouldn't interfere with our crops above surface? Out here, there's a few of them. Let's take a look. I don't have a huge weed problem in my garden, but there are a few common garden weeds that grow around here. Two of them being oxalis and spurge. The spotted spurge is something that shows up everywhere. It tends to be very low lying to the ground and it spreads out like a fan. The oxalis itself shows up in clumps. It doesn't spread out as much as the spurge, but it seems very prevalent. The other thing that we get a lot of is purslane, and I think a lot of gardeners do as well. The great thing about these crops is they are ultra low growing. They're not going to compete in the upper story of the plants with any sort of vegetables that we want to grow. They all stay pretty low to the ground. This spurge is a taller version. I have some spotted spurge down there. This one, I'm not exactly sure what type this is, but it does grow a little higher. 
it's probably eight inches tall. The best thing about this, the Axalis and the Purslin, is I didn't have to plan it. I don't have to manage it at all. Nature does all the work. So I'm trying to let more weeds grow in the garden. I'm not doing anything to call them in. I'm letting nature handle that part. I am just stewarding it by keeping myself out of the picture. When the weed shows up, if it's a low grower, if it's a spreader, I tend to back off and now just say, well, do your thing. Let's see how this works out for both of us. There are a few weeds though that I will pull out. Things like nettle that sting, they get high. I know you can eat it. I know you can. I know it's nutritious, but I have little kids and they're not the best at recognizing these things. So nettle comes out. I also get a lot of spreading weed like this. I think this is a bind weed. This is something I don't want because this can be super invasive and really take over a garden where the oxalis and the spurge it never really gets viney. It doesn't seem to want to take over and go kudzu jungle on me. So those I can leave in, but this bindweed and things that want to wrap or climb up plants, those go out, those go to the chickens. Here's a great example how these low growing weeds like spurge interact with other plants in the garden. You have different heights of plants, so you're not getting canopy conflict. There's no competition for light. The spurge is basically getting whatever it can that filters through the upper story above. So they're in the understory. They will show up when they can thrive. If there's enough light, they'll show up. If there's not, they don't. This is the great thing about nature. We don't have to control this. If the soil is damaged, they will show up. At least that's the theory behind it. This is spotted spurge right here. It's very low growing. It's maybe only three inches of high. I didn't plant it. It spreads out. It provides a nice mulching effect on the soil, cooling it. And again, the whole time it is putting its roots under the ground. Now this isn't spurge. I'll leave that in the ground. But it is putting roots like this under the ground, which take all the sunlight that is coming down from above, putting it out into the ground in the form of sugars, which encourages biological life under the soil. Maybe building soil doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. Maybe it doesn't have to be as much work as we make it. I know I've done a lot of videos encouraging you to plant you some cover crops in the ground, and there is a lot of benefit for that. But try a different way. Think a little bit outside the box. Challenge some of your perspectives and some of the assumptions that you have around gardening and some of these low-growing weeds of the world. Leave them in place. Don't pull them. Nature will put them in place if they want to grow there. When they're in place, they'll perform a function within the ecological succession of the garden. So that's a good thing. The only management that really needs to happen is inside of our heads. You need to manage yourself to allow these plants to stay in place and not pull them out. So leave your weeds in the garden, and I don't mean the weed, I mean the garden weeds, in the garden and see if you can get better soil by just sitting there watching and not doing anything. Sometimes the hardest part about doing anything in life is standing by and not doing. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.